do you break this over? Oh, you, oh, you lose parts with that stuff. And it's triple over. Uh, are we uh, roughly ready? Uh, we've got a big crowd. I'm glad people really are interested. We're going to talk about uh, fixing potholes uh, today, and then we'll talk about some other stuff at other times. But I thought it's thrilling that you all care enough to come today for that. No fun. Do any of you laugh about <laughs> anything? To get a life. God. Um, good morning. Uh, in uh, a recent uh, Economist magazine intelligence unit, uh, they named New York City as one of the most competitive cities in the world. Uh, that did not happen by accident. It happened because of the ongoing investments that we've made to improve the quality of life, to spur innovation, and diversify our economy. And one of the industries that has experienced exceptional growth under our administration is film and television production. In fact, last year, nearly 190 films and 140 TV series, late night shows and news and sports programs were filmed right here in New York City. And this spring, 13 television pilots are already scheduled to be shot here. It's really phenomenal for uh, our city. A major reason why the industry is in such great shape can be found right here at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, uh, which uh, we've transformed into one of the country's most successful urban industrial parks. Uh, if you remember, in 2004, we helped Doug Steiner open Steiner Studios, a state-of-the-art facility that's gone on to be involved in the production of big-budget films like Sex and the City, where Kathy Oliver and I were uh, filmed as major parts of the show, and then they cut us. <laughs> Turns out they wanted a more sex and less city, <laughs> which is really insulting to Kathy, but uh, to me, I learned to live with that. Uh, also, Enchanted and Mr. Popper's Penguins, and I do remember actually meeting some of Mr. Popper's Penguins during one of my visits here. They're very nice birds. They don't say a lot, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, Steiner is also currently the home of one of the hottest shows on TV, HBO's Board Boardwalk Empire, and we're excited today to be joined by Gretchen Mole and some of the other cast members and crew of the show. So, Gretchen, thank you. Uh, she uh, lives in New York City, uh, moved here many, many years ago. Uh, how long, when did you move here? When I was 19. When you were 19, so about three or four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was too easy, and uh, is raising her kids here in the city, and that's one of the great reasons that people want to work here, is this is a great place to raise your family. Um, the number of jobs that a big production like Boardwalk Empire supports is really pretty remarkable. Uh, they're among the approximately 100,000 jobs supported by TV and film production in our city jobs, not just for actors and actresses and production assistants, but also for carpenters and caterers and musicians and electricians and drivers and many other New Yorkers. So this really is important for uh, this city, uh, no matter what your interests are you are impacted by the economic effect of this industry. And we're proud to be home to these kinds of shows. We want more of them, and that's what makes today's announcement so exciting. Today, we are cutting the ribbon on five new sound stages totaling 45,000 square feet of space. Sina Studios has already, uh, already, was already the largest sound stage and production complex outside of Hollywood. So today's expansion, which doubles the number of sound stages here, means the facility will be even more of a powerhouse. And I'll let uh, Doug Steiner, the chairman of the studios, go into the details of the expansion. But just let me say this is actually great news for the industry and great news for New York City. It used to be that we struggled to attack, attract productions to New York City, and often they'd instead use other cities like Toronto or Prague to replicate New York. But now, in part of the great work of our commissioner, Kathy Oliver, and our Office of Media and Entertainment, we can hardly keep up with the demand. Our studios, I am happy to say, are booked solid. So Steiner's expansion gives us the capacity to compete with Hollywood like never before. And all the additional productions will attract, uh, it will attract, will provide a great boost to our local economy at a time when we really need it. Our administration is committed to doing everything we can to support film and TV production, uh, continue its growth, and create jobs for New Yorkers. And today I want to announce three more ways that we are going to do exactly that. The first is by investing in and strengthening the industry's workforce. Uh, back in my days in the private sector, I know that you've got to keep adapting if you're going to stay competitive, and that's especially true right now. And that's why our Department of Small Business Services, and Rob Walsh is here, there, 
uh, has been providing a range of small businesses in all five boroughs with a combination of city and federal funding to help develop the skills of their employees. And one such recipient was a Manhattan post-production company called The Studio, which is using a $31,000 grant to train eight of its employees in special effects software. Not only does this grant give the company the tools it needs to compete for television production work, it's also expected to uh, result in the eight employees receiving raises. That's more money for them and their families, and that gets spent and uh, filters through the system. Inspired by this success, today I'm excited to announce a new $500,000 training grant program specifically designed for the media and entertainment industry, and we appreciate, uh, anticipate awarding grants to 10 to 15 different businesses based in our city, and these grants will cover up to 70% of the training costs, ultimately helping them boost their competitiveness and enter new markets. The second way we are going to create jobs is the, in the city's media and entertainment sector is by encouraging innovation. And today I'm excited to announce a new nine-month MBA-style program for entrepreneurs in the industry. The class will run in partnership with the fantastic Stern, Stern School of Business at NYU. It's an extension of a business management program that we established with NYU for entrepreneurs in a diversity of industries. And so far, the graduates of this program have collectively secured $1.6 million in new financing and created 100 new jobs. And we anticipate our new program that's, um, uh, that's specific for media and entertainment will be equally successful. The third way we are going to grow our film and TV production is by tapping into another industry with a bright future in our city, and that is digital media. We are home to an incredibly dynamic and growing network of digital media startups, and as we turn to the internet for more and more of our entertainment, there is a tremendous opportunity for traditional and digital media professionals to join forces and innovate and create content. And that's why our Economic Development Corporation, along with our Office of Media and Entertainment, will issue this week a request for proposals for the establishment of a digital media center in the five boroughs. This will be a place where filmmakers and television producers and new media entrepreneurs can meet, interact, and collaborate. And it will be inspired by our network of business incubators, which provide space for budding entrepreneurs in a variety of industries, allowing them to rub shoulders with each other and launch their ideas. Uh, but this new digital media center will also have a strong educational component and host workshops and training sessions to help television, film, and uh, the productions thrive in the digital age. Uh, I might actually see if I can't get into one of these training programs, given I'm going to need a new job down the road. <laughs> and so far, my career as star is not doing well, so maybe I can get on the other side of the camera. Uh, today, we are joined by a number of distinguished guests who have worked so hard to make this industry what it is today, including key members of our administration. And I'd like to now give them an opportunity to speak. But first, we have to hear from the guy that's actually doing the work, the chairman of Steiner Studios, Doug Steiner. Doug? I think I need my glasses. Hold on. I could lend you one of my contacts. <laughs> thank you, Mayor Bloomberg. <laughs> there are uh, countless people to thank for helping to make this day a reality. I'm going to mention just a few. Uh, the mayor, of course, and Commissioner Catherine Oliver, the mayor's office of media and entertainment. You have both uh, refu uh, fueled the resurgence of the film and television business in New York City. Uh, Speaker Quinn, You've always recognized the uh, critical role that film and television production plays for the future of New York, and you are continuing to help us grow. Thank you. State Film Commissioner Pat Kaufman also is here, and she has had a profound role in uh, keeping our relations in Albany where they have to be to uh, keep the business competitive in New York. Uh, Alan Fishman, chairman of the Brooklyn Navy Yard Development Corporation, and its president, Andrew Kimball, who unfortunately can't be here today, have embraced our vision as well as revitalized the entire 300-acre Brooklyn Navy Yard for all sorts of industries. This is the preeminent urban industrial park in the country at this point. Thank you, Al. Seth Pinsky, president of the New York City Economic Development Corporation, Commissioner Robert Walsh, uh, Carlos Asura from the Brooklyn Borough President's Office, thank you all for your steadfast support. I also want to thank all the productions we've hosted over the years, especially Damages, 
which is just finishing its fifth and final season. We'll be sorry to see it go. Uh, Todd Kessler and Mark Baker, uh, show creator and producer, thanks to both of you. And a huge thanks to all of the talented people at Boardwalk Empire, now shooting its third season. Uh, Terry Winter, show creator. Uh, Gene Kelly, I see, is here, the producer. And the uh, superb Gretchen Mole, courtesy. Uh, thank you for making time out today to come here. Ah, i got to calm down. <laughs> Our architects, Richard Datner, Bill Stein, and the project architect, the incredibly dedicated and tireless project architect, Steve Frankel. Steve, thank you. Um, our lenders, New York Re City Regional Center is the uh, entity. Paul Levinson and George Olson. Uh, without you guys, we wouldn't have the money. We wouldn't be here today. Thank you. Uh, and the person who puts all the pieces together and is just fantastic at what she does, the project manager, Julia cullen Shang. She's very shy. I don't know if she's here. She's here. She's always uh, ready with a smile. She's fantastic to work with. Thank you, Juliet. Uh, last but not least, uh, first in my book, my father, David Steiner. Yay! As, as he likes to say, 82 years young. He has built this in 10 months, and uh, he's a builder without peer. He's a master builder. Thank you, Dad. Uh, my father and I, built this from the ground up, creating a full-service state-of-the-art center for film, television, and commercial production to rival the biggest stages in Hollywood. We opened in November of 2004. We already had three smaller expansions prior to today. With today's ribbon cutting, we now total 350,000 square feet, 10 sound stages, including the largest on the East Coast. We're continuing to expand, and we hope to realize our full vision of a 50-acre movie studio in the heart of New York City. When we started, we said that there wasn't any reason why the $5 billion film and television business in New York shouldn't be a $10 billion business in 10 years. We think we're just about at that goal now, and we have to set our heights, sights higher. The intellectual capital is here, as is the crew base. The New York City crew base is the best in the world. The carpenters, set painters, costume designers, hair and makeup artists, props people, electricians, grips, set designers, camera operators, the list goes on and on. And of course, the actors, including extras which in New York means they are available in every size, shape, ethnicity, age, and talent imaginable. Then why can't the mayor get a gig? <laughs> With some exceptions. <laughs> we, we see our mission as eliminating obstacles to working in New York. That means having a real movie lot, just like they have in Los Angeles because that's the model that works, with everything under one roof, so to speak, to realize cost savings and create synergies. The flourishing film and television business in New York has generated tens of thousands of new jobs and represents another economic pillar for New York. We want the business to plant roots here. That means building the physical infrastructure the way that we are doing. New York City has a diamond district, a fur district, the financial district, even a button district. We want to be the content creation district because geographic concentration and critical mass promotes growth for this industry. We can ultimately grow Steiner Studios to 5,000 direct jobs. This business is manufacturing for the 21st century, and it's one type of manufacturing that New York City does exceedingly well. And this is not manufacturing that is going to be done in China anytime soon. While it's great that we have the best physical plant, that's not why people keep coming back. It's the staff. My title is Figurehead. They do all the work. As a producer told me after wrapping up Spider-Man 3 here, he said, Doug, I have to tell you, I never heard any of your people say no. It was always, let me see how I can make that happen. I think that just about says it all. That's the spirit of this place. That's why it's great to come to work every day. That's why I have the best job in the world. Thank you. Doug, thank you. Um, I think everybody knows that Chris Quinn has been a strong partner in our efforts to create more jobs for New Yorkers. Uh, so I think it's only appropriate that she now talks for the next hour, hour and a half. Chris? Thank you. Be a detailed economic analysis of the impact of the film and television industry. Uh, first, I just want to uh, recognize my colleague, uh, the chair of our finance committee, Council Member Dominic Emricky Jr., and thank him for all of his support in this. And, uh, you know, Doug said he thought he should calm down. 
I don't think there's anything to calm down about. This is incredibly exciting and an enormous credit to you and your father and your entire family. So thank you all for having this vision for this wonderful film lot here in Brooklyn. And Alan, you and Andrew deserve tremendous credit for making this a space possible where the Steiner's dreams could come true. And we're very lucky in New York to have people who see someplace like the Brooklyn Navy Yard and don't think about getting rid of it don't think about jettisoning, the, jettisoning, whatever, you know what I mean, this part of our past, but instead figure out how to take the past and make it part of the present and the future. And we're also very lucky that we have an administration and this, led by the mayor, and in this case by Seth Pinsky and Catherine Oliver, who has brought film and television back to New York in numbers that sometimes we can't even sustain, so thank you. And Rob Walsh, who see this potential and also in partnership with the council and our great borough president, Marty Markowitz, come together and make this happen. And if there is one lesson we need to learn from this recession, it is the need to diversify our economy, to have more in our economic portfolio, to create more jobs for all different kinds of people so we're not reliant just on real estate and Wall Street. This is a great example of that diversification. And these five additional film studios, particularly if you overlay them, the terrific uh, production assistant program Catherine runs, also, all the work that has gone on with the council and the mayor's office since 2006 to diversify the film industry, particularly behind the camera and the other jobs. We are going to have tremendous job opportunities here for all types of diverse New Yorkers. And it's something Dominic and I are incredibly excited about. I just want to mention to the mayor how excited we are in the council about this new center for digital media. We agree that this is a place where we could have tremendous growth in New York and continue to really be surging forward in the area of tech and high tech and digital media and even soon be f way further ahead than we are at Boston, which we already are, but even leaving them in the dust altogether in this area. So I have a couple spots in mind, Seth, we'll talk <laughs> later, but this is a great day for New York, for our creative heart and soul, but most importantly, a great day that's going to put New Yorkers to work, which is the thing we need most. So thank you very much, Mayor Bloomberg. <laughs> Chris, thank you. Um, I should point out we have Pat Kaufman, the uh, State Film Commissioner. Pat, welcome. Thank you. And uh, we have our Commissioner for the Mayor's Office of Film, Theater, and Broadcasting here. Uh, she has made it easier for, and more attractive than ever to shoot films in New York City and make TV shows here. Commissioner, you want to say a few words? It's really, it really is amazing to think about how the landscape of Steiner Studios and the Navy Yard and our entertainment industry has changed since 2004. And it was back then that we, many of us were gathered um, with the mayor, Governor Pataki, and the Steiners, and Mel Brooks to uh, open up the Steiner Studios. And that was such an exciting time. And so now this expansion comes at such a, a critical juncture as the mayor pointed out, we have record film and television production in New York, so it's wonderful. Um, there are a number of other incentives that we're announcing today that the mayor touched on, and it all um, goes part and parcel with our determination to create more job opportunities and to promote this industry and to stress diversity in this industry. Um, a number of years ago, we launched the Made in New York marketing credit, which was phenomenally successful. Um, here, we would look at a production's New York spend and give them free outdoor media in the form of bus shelters to promote their project. So not only w did we want to encourage production to do their physical production here, but we want to help promote that it's made in New York in the number one media market in the world. Now we're expanding that program, and we're going to add um, impressions in subways and in taxis. So so that Made in New York Productions will have even more exposure in the city of New York. So we're very proud about that program. Um, the workforce training is critical. And back in 2006, we created the Made in New York Production Assistant Training Program. Some of the folks from Brooklyn Workforce Innovations are here today. And BWI, for the last decade, has spent most of their time in downtown Brooklyn. And it's really exciting to announce as well that they are moving part of their operations to the Navy Yard. They're actually in Building 92, and the Made in New York PA training program will be operating out of that facility. And we have um, 
We have completed 25 cycles of training of the PA training program. This is a four-week free boot camp where we teach kids to be PAs. And then they're hired into entry-level positions as production assistants on films and TV shows. We've trained over 320 young people. They've taken in earnings of $7.5 million in the last few years. So it's been phenomenally successful. And now that they're here at the Navy Yard, there will be even more opportunities with other film and TV shows for them to work. Um, I want to thank uh, Rob Walsh and Small Business Services. The mayor mentioned the additional workforce training programs that we're launching, and this is part of the effort to expand the education and to get more people involved in post-production and also in graduate studies in film and television and entertainment business. And I also want to thank Seth Pinsky and his team at EDC. The Made in New York Digital Media Center is very innovative. We're so excited to launch this. This is really going to help us position to help serve those in traditional media and in new media really figure out their careers as, as the industry changes. So it's an exciting day for us, and we're very committed to expanding the industry in innovative ways um, as, as best we can. So thank you. Kathy, thank you. Uh, we are here in the in Kings County, um, and needless to say, Kings County uh, needs to be represented, and it is being represented very well today by Carlos Asora, Chief of Staff, to Borough President Marty Markowitz, who is not here today, but I won't ask where he is. We're happy to have you. You can tell him we're very happy to have you here. <laughs> Uh, well, that's good. That's good. Um, I point out that we also have Diana Lopez, uh, Executive Vice President of the Business Affairs of the Empire State Development Corporation. And uh, nothing we do uh, do we do without uh, help from the state. And so we appreciate all of your and Pat's work. Uh, next speaker is Rob Walsh from the Department of Small Business Services. Thank Rob, I'll, I'll be very brief. Uh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know you like that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the last time we teamed up with Catherine Oliver, it was you, myself, uh, Catherine, and Spider-Man. And that worked out very well, um, which helped our workforce, one, career centers, bring more people into our centers. And uh, I'll take credit for her publicity and marketing of those centers, which led to more New Yorkers getting jobs. So we're excited about this, uh, even if it is without uh, Spider-Man. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, we're building off two existing programs that we do have. Uh, when the mayor came into office, you've got to remember back in 2002, we didn't have a small business services department. Uh, we have one today. We have something called business solutions. What we're finding is many more media uh, companies are coming to our centers looking for help. They're looking for help with uh, grants and training and incentives. And this is a logical next step of building off our training funds program and the program that we now have with NYU School of Business. I want to also uh, acknowledge Colleen Galvin, who's an assistant commissioner, who's been doing all the work, and I have, again, been taking all the credit for it. So, Colleen, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And finally, the president of the city's Economic Development Corporation, Seth Pinsky. Seth. Thank you, Mayor Bloomberg. In an age of increasing global competition, uh, we at the Economic Development Corporation and in the Bloomberg administration believe that it's more important than ever that we ensure that New York City retains its competitive edge. And to achieve this, we think that a critical element is diversifying and strengthening the city's economy. And supporting the city's media and entertainment sector is a critical element in turn of this effort. As the mayor and speaker mentioned, the industry creates a diverse range of opportunities, and we couldn't be more excited that Steiner Studios has invested to expand this capacity. And we know that with partners like Steiner, the industry will continue to grow and thrive here in New York. We're also looking to build on this record by launching the Made in New York Digital Media Center, and we uh, couldn't be more excited to be working with Catherine Oliver and her team at the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment to issue this RFP. The center is going to take elements of the model that we've used with incredible success throughout the city in our network of 10 incubators, which bring together entrepreneurs and affordable space as well as various support services to generate economic activity. And today, our network of incubators supports over 900 jobs 
and has capacity for over 1,000 businesses in the next three years. And where better to replicate this success than in the media and entertainment industry, which today employs in total hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers. We know that there's room for growth, and we're looking forward to working with Catherine Oliver and her team, and Rob Walsh and his team, and the council, and uh, everyone else here today uh, to make sure that this industry continues to thrive in New York City. Thank you. Seth, thank you. Let me just summarize for our Spanish-speaking audience. Bienvenidos a los estudios Steiner, el estudio de cine y televisión más grande fuera de Hollywood, donde hoy se abren cinco nuevos escenarios de producción. La televisión y el cine son importantísimos a nuestra economía, y por eso hacemos todo lo posible para formar la fuerza laboral uh, fomentar la innovación y conectar nuevos empleados uh, a todos nuestros comunidades. And with that, we'll be happy to take some questions of anybody. Yes, sir. Good morning. Um, the opening of the five new stages, does that represent an immediate number of jobs that have been created? Yeah. <coughs> or is it just more space to do the same amount of work? I think our estimate of this uh, building will be yeah, somewhere in the order of 500 to 750 more jobs from this facility. And that's from this building. From this building. 500 million. But we have about 13, a 13 to 15 pilots that are shooting now in New York. And the big question from Los Angeles when these projects were coming, which is usually this time of year, is where can we shoot these things? So this is amazing. I mean, uh, the phone was ringing off the hook. Pat got the calls too. And like fall into December, where we're bringing these pilots to New York, where are we gonna shoot them? And so this is wonderful to have this facility available. The pilots will be coming in hopefully and new shows and we'll find out in May if these 13 shows are gonna get picked up. So fingers crossed, so we'll keep the stages busy. And the average uh, show employs how many people during a year? Well, Two you know, it, it, uh, usually on a show, a half-hour show could be anywhere in the range of about 500 to 1,000 people. And then, of course, they have extras. And an hour-long episodic series would have twice that. Wow. I mean, it's, it's amazing, a, a show that goes on. A, a movies are great, but the shows that go on are the ones that really employ lots of people. Sir? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's the difference? Is there a difference in making a show in L.A. versus New York? Do you detect any differences? Well, for me, I'm from Connecticut originally, and I moved here, and I've always just loved living here, I feel. Well, the real thing is that the extras just look different. <laughs> the extras in New York look like real people. You know, <laughs> everyone goes to L.A. to be an actor, and um, I think I've always just, uh, you look around any any uh, room that you're in, and here you are trying to pretend something, and, and here you, it's so much easier, because you just look around and it feels like you're not pretending, it's real, you know. Um, the level of talent that's here is pretty stupendous, so, and I love being able to work in my backyard and not have to move my family, and. So thank you. It's a great thing. Some of the big uh, directors that I know and from L.A., they would love to live here. Some of them, uh, you know, would like to move their businesses here. We just never had the capacity. Um, and uh, they've always said that if they had more, if we had more space, they would move more business here. Yes, sir? How would the industry be different? Could we have the industry without saying? How could this space even go? How could we change the industry? Well, number one, just making uh, physical space. Uh, but I think also, uh, when you talk to the directors, they will tell you that the professionalism of the support staff, uh, the grips and the carpenters and everybody that really makes the movie other than the people that you see on the camera, that the, it may be slightly more expensive, but they say the quality of the work and the amount of work they get, and everyone has said to me the same thing, is so much more that on balance, it is less expensive to do business here. They're more confident that what they are trying to create will get translated into that film uh, because of the professionalism. And, uh, you know, I, I've, we've, I know Kathy as well, we've asked uh, what's wrong, what could we do better? Uh, we're constantly trying to find out, and they just, 
they always want more, but they always say, keep it up. We're doing the right thing. But it's yes. also about you know, giving better access. We, you know, we're making it easier for productions to get permits, access to key locations, and to have a facility like this that is purpose-built for the industry. You know, th this just doesn't exist in other territories. So that's all. Yeah, and let me also point out that uh, a lot of the people that work here want to live here. I mean, you know, Brooklyn's as hot a borough as you can find in this day and age. Uh, you had a question? Mary, are you disappointed with how New York is portrayed in uh, cinema or in television? And have you ever expressed that disappointment? Uh, well, certainly, I would not. It's not my business to tell people what they should do in movies. I think um, the the comedy shtick of New York having problems and crime and that sort of thing is so out of date that it's really going away. It's just not funny anymore and nobody believes it. People know if they come to the city, they're gonna be safe. I mean, our reputation, I don't think, people here don't understand our reputation and I saw it again in Singapore last week. We are the role model for bringing crime down, improving the schools, parks, roads, innovation, cultural, uh, and that's why we won the Lee Kuan Yew Prize. Um, they rank us as the best city economist, intelligence units, um, uh, evaluation. All of the things that the stereotypes of what New York used to be uh, have basically gone away. I suppose if you made a period piece, it would come back. But short of that, you don't see that well, anymore. You, you kicked Larry David out of New York. Uh, well, I did throw Larry David out of New York. <laughs> Something I've always regretted. He hasn't called me since. Yes, sir. The tax incentives like, and is that a major part of it? Well, the, the, the state has been very generous, and Pat's been the spearhead on that. Thank you. Um, and what we've tried to do with city money is to provide some other infrastructure, but it's mainly there has been uh, subsidies from the state. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of other places try to buy business, and you just have to be competitive, although that's not the value proposition for New York. In the end, people come here because this is where the professionalism and the actors and the, 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 the um, uh, people that to just come in and, and, and create New York uh, here, uh, this is where they want to be. Uh, other questions on, the, uh, on films? Yes, sir. Hollywood has that big old Hollywood sign. Does New York need something like that? <laughs> Uh, we, have, uh, we, have, we have the skyline of New York, which is the equivalent. In Hollywood, they have to put up a sign. We don't, I don't know how to break this to you, but we don't have to put up a sign. <laughs> the good news is we are iconic. The bad news is when it comes to keeping us safe, we're iconic. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, New York speaks for itself. And uh, it's still... The greatest place to live, and uh, this is uh, why people want to do business here. And film, theater, and television is just one, but you know you can go right down every industry, and it's hard to find an industry that uh, we aren't doing well with. There's some that just will never be here. We never. If you want to grow corn or have a steel mill, this is not the place for you. That's not what we specialize in. But no matter what other industry, if intellectual capital is part of your uh, business plan. Uh, this is the we're the best and the brightest one to be. Uh, we're going to take a two-minute break, and then we'll take some off-topic questions. And thank you very much. A wonderful day for New York. And I just wanted to, uh, I hope you make a lot of money and uh, your son keep him working so you can enjoy it. You know, good strategy. God bless. Thank you. Oh, we're going to cut a ribbon. Let's probably bring this back a bit.